with the cavalcade of Biden administration officials we witnessed in the summer of 2023. And the Secretary of State Antony Blinken, John Kerry, Janet Yellen, uh, uh, Secretary of Commerce Gino Armando, we had a large number of individuals, Jake Sullivan meeting uh, separately, uh, an almost endless, again, cavalcade of Biden administration officials uh, attempting to uh, engage, attempting to uh, deliver to the PRC what the PRC wanted at the cost uh, of American interest. Also, and far more significantly, at a time of tremendous vulnerability for Xi Jinping's rule, at a time where we have tremendous leverage, and he's in a position of tremendous weakness, uh, we choose not to exercise that to bring about the changes that we'd like to see. So it's, uh, I would say it's not inexplicable because it does have an explanation. Uh, and the engagement school is one which is often uh, provided, which is we need to engage with the PRC, build a world uh, together. Uh, but of course, that's responsible for uh, our decades uh, of mistakes and which have led us to this uh, very difficult position in which we find ourselves. Well, absolutely. I'm going to definitely invite you back very soon to uh, discuss this in greater detail and discuss your book, which I find absolutely fascinating. Um, I want to talk a little bit uh, as we finish about this moment that you're describing of Xi Jinping's great weakness. I mean, again, what we saw in the last few days in San Francisco does not suggest weakness. It, it's almost like it's almost would be easy based on the media coverage to forget that such weakness exists or, or does it even? So explain this to me. <laughs> well, it shows profound weakness because he's coming to the American business community uh, to beg, uh, in essence. Sadly, the American business community greets him, uh, you know, and, and uh, provides the opportunity for him uh, to speak. But it's because he's profoundly weak that he's having to come and to talk to them, and to essentially ask them to provide resources and to provide their political uh, influence uh, to help him out of this difficult situation in which he uh, finds himself. The Biden administration simply allows that to move ahead, which is why I describe them as a doormat. They're simply uh, he's wiping his feet before he crosses the threshold to the real meeting uh, with uh, the business leaders. So, in fact, he's uh, in a position of, of weakness. Um, we don't frame it that way and thus help the PRC, help the Ch Chinese Communist Party and the image that Xi uh, seeks to portray. But looking at the condition of his economy, looking at his paranoia and the increasing tightening uh, of um, uh, that is evinced by that uh, paranoia uh, in the party uh, shows that this is an individual who's profoundly dangerous and at the same time profoundly vulnerable. And maybe just explain to me briefly what the situation with the economy as you understand it. One, let's start with that sure. and then I'll go to the second part. There are yeah. structural problems in the Chinese economy which are not Xi's faults immediately but uh, are coming to a head uh, with his rule. And then there are the immediate uh, if you will, uh, problems of the economy uh, that are his responsibility and for which he bears uh, responsibility. So the structural problems are demographic, they're environmental, they're endemic corruption, uh, they're overproduction uh, in certain industries. Uh, the policies for which he's directly responsible are the crackdown really on through anti-corruption campaign which has stressed the, uh, ti the essentially tigers and flies uh, anti-corruption campaign going after the big ones, also going after the sm uh, smaller ones, which have stressed uh, lower levels uh, of government uh, and uh, among party officials. There was the COVID lockdown and coming out of that, which generated the uh, blank page protests or white page protests that we saw a year ago. Uh, that led to tremendous uh, disruption and that shows that he does not yet, China has not uh, recovered. And then, of course, there are the uh, problems associated with trade uh, difficulties, largely imposed by the Trump administration and modestly continued uh, by the Biden administration, which he seeks to free himself, to, to uh, free the Chinese economy uh, from that tightening, uh, if you will, in, in key sectors uh, in uh, particular. So he has structural problems coming to a head uh, while he's in power. And then there are things uh, that are a result of his misrule, egregious uh, misrule, 
that conspire to put him in a very difficult situation in terms of the legitimacy crisis. All classes of the Chinese people see the Chinese Communist Party as illegitimate. Uh, and then the existential crisis that are a result of the fact that his economy is in downturn. Uh, and if it were not the money that he could raise from the 400, as well as from New York markets uh, and uh, Wall Street, uh, he would indeed face an acute existential crisis and might be removed uh, from power. Don't forget to subscribe to our Alerts newsletter, and you'll never miss an episode.